Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up a Windows Server 2003 domain controller and DNS server. Um, just uh, first a disclaimer at times you may it may seem like I have two mice but that's because uh, I'm actually running a virtual machine so one of them is my regular mouse and one of them is my virtual mouse <laughs> if you might so please don't get confused. So to start click on the start menu and under administrative tools bring up the manage your server screen and click on add or remove a server role <coughs> uh, the initial steps click on next <coughs> this will start the uh, configuration wizard now as you can see here there are uh, a few different options uh, the one we're interested in obviously is the domain controller active directory option um, you could set up any of the other options from this screen as well but that's not part of this tutorial so select domain controller active directory and click next followed by another next to initiate the Active Directory installation screen. Here on the wizard screen click on next again. It will prompt you for operating system compatibility. That's fine. Click next. What we want is a domain controller for a new domain. So click this option and uh, hit next. We want a brand new domain we don't have an existing domain so we don't need any of the other options and then click next here <coughs> for the um, domain name you have to enter a, a fully qualified domain name for this example I'm going to enter digiaztest.local And it could be anything as uh, format is domain name dot extension. And click next. <coughs> so for uh, the NetBIOS name, the default is fine. It takes the first part of my fully qualified domain name. And I'm happy with that. Click next here again the default directories are fine I'm going to accept those and hit next as well as for shared system volume I'm going to accept the default the only time you wouldn't accept the defaults on those uh, is if you are uh, running out of this space and you want to put them in a different location so uh, for uh, DNS registration diagnostics just choose the second option here uh, to install and configure DNS server on this computer on this next screen it's a compatibility issue again uh, the default option is fine we are going to click next and here I'm going to enter a uh, password for the restore make sure you type it the same way uh, twice and hit next followed by next to initiate the installation now the active directory installation wizard is going to uh, go through a couple of different things it's going to uh, set up the system volume for the uh, um, log files and it's going to uh, set up active directory once it is done it should prompt us with a, a finished screen um, followed by a reboot uh, which um, we will wait for As you can see, uh, it is still setting up the directories um, 
for um, our Active Directory um, installation and um, it should be done in a few moments Okay, now um, it um, uh, switched over to the configuring components screen, and this is where it actually prompts you for the CD for your Windows uh, 2003 CD, which I will insert in this machine. this will continue the uh, installation process uh, for the DNS server uh, portion of our installation now. The uh, domain controller uh, the setup should be done at this point uh, so the DNS installation process is a whole different process. If you get the Windows 2003 screen make sure to exit out of it you don't uh, want to run anything while the uh, uh, system is getting configured. Now depending on how you have configured your network you may get this prompt here which is for optional networking component. Because uh, I am lo running a dynamic IP locally um, it's prompting me that you can change this uh, to a static IP which <coughs> I'm not going to do obviously um, if I wanted to do it, I would go here under TCP IP properties and say use the following IP address. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cancel out of there. It will prompt you that you've chosen to uh, use a dynamic IP. Um, it's not very reliable, but for our demonstration purpose, it's fine. If you were in a live environment, you would want to uh, reserve an IP address for um, your domain controller. That doesn't change. So that will be for a production environment. But for uh, testing purposes, um, dynamic IP should be fine. It will now uh, continue the uh, Active Directory DNS uh, configuring process. The uh, installation process actually takes quite a bit longer than what you see here on the screen. Um, I have been uh, cutting out some of the time that it takes to configure just for the sake of uh, this tutorial because the screen doesn't really change during the, the bulk of the installation. It just remains the same for a lot of different parts. So I'm just cutting it down a little bit to make it more manageable. So um, this is it. Once your um, installation is complete, you will get a prompt similar to the um, Active Directory prompt you see on the screen. And if you hit Finish, it will prompt you to restart, which uh, you have to do in order to complete the installation process. So I will click on Restart now to restart the machine. Okay, so um, the machine is now uh, starting up 
and we should be prompted with the login screen at this point uh, shortly. Okay, so here's our login screen. I'm going to uh, the control alt delete to login. Notice that under options, if you click on the options button, we now have the option to log on to our uh, domain name, which I chose to be Digiaz Test. So I'm going to log on to the domain name. As the domain administrator, I should have full machine access. So I um, should be able to log into the machine as the administrator. Once we have successfully logged in, I should be prompted that this machine is now a domain controller uh, shortly. And there it is. The server is now a domain controller. So uh, once you get the screen, it means that your uh, installation has been successfully completed. You can click on finish to uh, finish the process and exit out. Now, if you have any other uh, PCs on your network, you would uh, essentially be adding them to this machine. And uh, you'll be using this machine as the uh, domain uh, Active Directory uh, controller. Now, if you were to remove this um, Active Directory domain, which I'm not, not going to do, but I'm just going to hint at, if you ever had the need to uninstall this domain that you just created, all you would do is select the Domain Controller option here again and hit Next, and that this would remove the domain from, from the server. Thanks for uh, listening. I hope that this information comes in handy.